Hey y'all, what's that? I just want to give a shout out to Petty Tupac TV. Make sure you go smash, like, and don't forget to subscribe. For real, for real. What up though? You already know how it go. Make sure you smash, like, subscribe, and comment. I don't care what you comment as long as you comment. You did. I want to preference this video with saying I don't care if a guy snitch or not. I told y'all that plenty of times. I'm a civilian now. The streets are the worst thing I ever could have picked up. Ain't no loyalty. Ain't no rules in this. I don't care. You allow yourself to be a pawn and you do something dumb to get snitched on. I don't care. You just a mark. You do your dirt all by your lonely. We've been taught this over years from the block to the, to the rap music to the movies. You do your dirt by your lonely. If there's no one to tell on you, you can't be told on unless you tell on yourself. Period. I'm not calling this guy this, this, and that. It's a hot topic, though. And I don't like some of the things that uh, the brother Snoopy Badass, a.k.a. or better known as Melvin Banks. Uh, I don't like some of the stuff that he promote. Like, I miss the gang banging on the wall and, and, and Xing out murals and stuff like that. Just just typical uh, treacherous California behavior. You know what I'm saying? Who wants spray paint on spray paint on their walls in their community, man? Who want to walk around with super big khakis and big tees on, man? Like, grow up. You dig what I'm talking about? But we're going to go through this whole story, but partially. We're not going to, you know, we just... And you can look all this up. This is documented stuff. You can sign up for your seven-day free trial on case, uh, a law, uh, or whatnot. All this, you got to pay for the downloads, or the, or the tra uh, not the transcripts, but the uh, actual statements that were signed and stuff like that. It's all online. You can go look at it. It's nothing that I'm just making up. But let's get into this. Defendant Damien T. Doster drove to the In-N-Out Burger Restaurant in Moreno Valley on September 3rd, 2005 with his friends Sharif Garrett and Rashid Muslim. They arrived at the parking lot of the restaurant and parked near a large crowd that was assembled. Garrett Muslim and defendant exited the car and Garrett got into a verbal altercation with someone in the crowd as Garrett walked back to his car, presumably to get a gun that was secreted in the center console of the car. A man emerged from the crowd and shot him in the back of the head. Defendant armed himself with a gun and hid in the bushes. At the same time, Garrett's friend Damon Mabins and another man, Melvin Banks. Melvin Banks is Snoopy Badass. That's his real name, Melvin Banks. Drove by and recognized Gear's truck. When Mabins and Banks approached Gear's body, defendant came out of the bushes and shot Mabins five or six times in the torso. Defendant discarded the weapon. Defendant ran to a nearby gas station where he encountered the police and told them he had no involvement in the shooting. Garrett and Mavens were pronounced dead at the scene. Defendant was convicted of second degree murder and intentionally um, discharging a firearm causing great bodily injury along with being a felon in possession of a firearm. Defendant now continues the trial court aired by felon Sua Sponte instruct the jury uh, on unconsciousness, the prosecutor committed uh, prejudicial misconduct during cross-examination and closing argument, and they concluded, concluded that there was no error that occurred. So he's kind of stuck with that. But let's go into the procedural background, right? A jury found guilty, and it might sound the same, okay? It's different, okay? Just hear me out. Procedural background, right? A jury found defendant guilty of second-degree murder of Mabins, and the jury found true the allegations that he personally discharged a firearm causing great bodily injury and committing the second degree murder. He was additionally convicted of being a felon in possession of a firearm in a befucated, I can't, I don't even know what that word is, befucated proceeding. Defendant admitted that he had suffered a prior conviction and served a prison term for that conviction. The trial court sentenced defendant to the intermediate sentence of 40 years to life for second degree murder. And gun enhancement plus uh, the determinate sentence of three years for being a felon in possession of a handgun for the prior prison term enhancement. So this guy basically told himself. So sometimes when you go to trial or you got a case, they might not know you don't have any priors. You might be under an alias or you just or they just might not come up. He told on himself. He just told on himself, man. Uh, all further statutory references are to the penal code unless otherwise specified the jury found defendant not guilty of the attempted murder of banks right now go look at what banks did and it's, it's easy okay right now let's go into the factual background 
from the prosecution. Okay? On September 2nd, 2005, Thurman Scheisler was working at the In-N-Out Burger restaurant located at the corner of Hemlock Avenue and Pigeon Pass Road in Moreno Valley. Sometime between 11 p.m. and 12 a.m., a large crowd, 30 to 50 people, gathered in the parking lot. Most of the members of the crowd were teenagers or in their early 20s. The police were called and they dispersed the crowd. I don't know why the age matters, but it is what it is. Sometime in the evening of September 2nd, 2005, Rashid Muslim met up with defendant and Sharif Garrett, who were in Garrett's sports utility vehicle, an SUV. At the time, Garrett asked Muslim if he had a gun, and Muslim told him no. Muslim got to the backseat of Garrett's SUV. They all drove to a club in Colton, but did not go in. They then drove to Moreno Valley in in and out Burger, right? As Muslim, Garrett, and defendant were walking into the restaurant, they encountered a crowd of people whom Muslim did not know. Garrett got into a verbal confrontation with someone in the crowd. The man said something about shooting Garrett. Garrett responded, they didn't stop making guns when they made yours. Garrett started walking back to the SUV. Muslim believed it was to retrieve a gun that Garrett kept in the center console. The man from the crowd screamed to his friends, to get a gun. Garrett leaned into the SUV. Another man then ran up and shot Garrett in the back of the head. Muslim tried to go toward Garrett to help him, but the man shot him in the leg. Muslim ran inside the restaurant. Muslim had no idea about the defendant's whereabouts during or after the shooting. Shizzler was in the back of the room of the restaurant when he heard at least three popping sounds. Shizzler then heard employees from the kitchen area screaming. When Shizzler entered the kitchen, Muslim was leaning on the wall. Muslim told Shizzler he had been shot in the leg. Shizzler wrapped the leg and waited for paramedics. The same night, Damon Mabins and Melvin Banks, which is Snoopy Badass, Melvin Banks and Snoopy Badass were driving by the in and out Burger and observed a group of people outside of the parking lot. Mabins slowed down. Just then, Banks observed a black man chasing after another man later discovered to be Garrett who was one of Mabin's friends. Banks saw the man chase Garrett and shoot Garrett in the head. Mabin's then told Banks that he might have known the man who had been shot. He wanted to go back in. Now Melvin Banks was in custody at the time of his testimony for attempted murder in a different case. These are all facts. You can look this up. You can look the statement up. You can pay to print it off. Banks drove up and stopped either next or to or behind Garrett's SUV. Mabins walked up to Garrett, who was lying on the ground. He called to Banks to come over. Mabins bent over Garrett's body. There was no one else near the body. As they were standing near Garrett's body, defendant came out of nowhere and shot Mabins. Banks could not recall if defendant came from inside the truck or a grass area in front of the truck. Banks ran at trial. Banks admitted that he told police after the shots were fired at Mavis, that he had heard a clicking sound from the gun before he ran. He denied he ever told police that the defendant pointed the gun at him when he heard the clicking sound. Maria Sneed was inside the In-N-Out Burger restaurant and heard what sounded like firecrackers outside. Muslim then walked into the restaurant living. Sneed looked out the window and saw a man shooting another man who was lying on the ground. While the man was lying on the ground, Sneed observed the other man shoot him at least four times. She then saw that the shooter ran away. Mavis and Garrett ended up lying on the ground 10 feet from each other. Right? Banks told police officers. Banks told police officers who spoke with him after the incident that the defendant jumped out of the bushes that were in front of the SUV and shot Mavis. He also told officers that the defendant had pointed the gun directly at him and he heard a click. Earlier in the evening, Riverside County Sheriff's Deputy Aaron Wolf had responded to the in and out Burger restaurant to break up a disturbance. Some people in the crowd appeared to be ready to get into a fight, and Deputy Wolf and other officers ordered them to disperse. The parking lot was clear. When Deputy Wolf returned to the area in response to the shooting, he encountered the defendant at a nearby gas station. The defendant was running, and Deputy Wolf ordered him to stop. The defendant did not seem agitated and was calm. The defendant told Deputy Wolf that he was inside the in and out Burger restaurant when he heard a round of gunshots. The defendant heard a second round of gunshots. He exited the in and out Burger and started running away to avoid being shot. The defendant was interviewed by Detective Gary LeClaire on September 4, 2005 at the police station. The shoes the defendant was wearing at the interview matched the shoe footprints found in the blood at the scene. On rebuttal, 
The prosecution presented evidence the defendant lied to police that the shoes he had on during the interview were the ones he wore during the shooting. Defendant Melvin Banks signed a statement witnessed by two police officers. At this time of his statements, he was incarcerated on an unrelated attempted murder charge. So if y'all wonder what happened, this is what happened. Now, this is the procedural background and the factual background. That's why the two stories sound the same. I'm not about to put a bunch of effects with this video. Y'all just listen to this, man. I'm not about to do all that. I will do it on YBI Chestnut when I when I, when I do his uh his background. He's making making it a thug right now, but it's still be badass a snitch. According to y'all straight rules, he is a snitch. He did tell you. I don't know why he told it. I don't know if they gave him a deal with his uh a uh, murder case, I mean, this attempted murder case or not, I don't know, but, you know, when you gangster, super blood, I don't think you're supposed to be doing this type of stuff, but I don't look at you no type of way. I'm not mad at you, brother. I'm more mad about you saying the dumb stuff about, hey, I miss tagging on the wall. I miss extra big khakis and baggy jeans. You dig? Like, peace of blessings be upon y'all. Big five. Detroit. I get a rush from catching bites. I love when I hop die. Pull up, broad day. Brrr, make his mama cry. Me and Doja took his we life. Did. Fuck him, he had to pay the price. Still in my hood. Mm -mm. Bitch, I feel like bones. Pop a perk, I'm in my zone. Barney 